Paris, France. City of fashion, romance, and food. You can remember its sights and sounds on your computer and on your phone, but the tastes of Paris can only be relived if you can find a place that makes the flavors of Paris. And such a place exists on the Lower East Side of New York City. The Lower East Side of New York City, known for its wide variety of ethnic foods and artistic vibes. It is not a surprise to see such an authentic French bakery make its home in this location. So if you want to learn about France and the taste of France, you need to come to a place like La Fournil, which is behind me, and it's very tasty. It is actually Le Fournil. I have trouble pronouncing French words, but I don't have trouble knowing this is a great bakery, and it is new, replacing Moisha's kosher bakery that had been there until 2019, after more than 40 years in the business of making baked goods like challah bread, hamantashens, and the ubiquitous black and white cookie. When Moishas closed, Jean-Francois Herbe, a third-generation baker from France who had been in New York City for eight years, decided it was time to open up his own bakery for French goods. Now, I am not sure this is how they bake in France. Though a very arduous profession, baking is a sort of romanticized profession, and I like to romanticize it. Also, it would be fun to be able to blow such a horn for attention. When the space was renovated, century-old tiling and a metal ceiling were revealed. The history of the space may be interesting, but the real reason to come to Le Fernil is the French food items they sell. And boy, is it popular. Lines will form outside the door. Le Fernil imports some authentic French goods, cereals, condiments, cookies, but it is the things they bake that are the real treat and feature. They have such a variety that your taste buds will never get tired. Feast your eyes on these beautiful items of baked goods and come in person to see for yourself. The only difficult part of your visit will be making a choice of what items to get. My goodness, look at all those things on that menu. It would take a month to eat through all of it. Oh, and those breads, look at them. There must be about five of them. Oh, and puffy, puffy dough things with sugar on top of them. Mmm. Oh, quiches. I see regular quiches. Ah, and there's spinach quiche. And a croissant. Look at those croissants. They're so delicate and flaky. Oh, and they glisten with butter. Oh, my goodness. And then we have... Oh, is that a pain chocolat? You can tell, it's like a zebra dancing across the Serengeti Plains with the gazelle. Oh, and a little chocolate bun in the back. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, powdered sugar over a fantastic cream. Oh, yes, it is. It's cream filled. Oh, my God, that's wonderful. Ooh, little mini custards. Mm, oh gosh, those look so good. Oh, it's a madeleine. Oh my goodness, and stuff around. I don't know. My gosh, this is a lot of stuff. And then more stuff. That, more stuff I don't even recognize. My God, before I eat them, I'm going to have to educate myself. And make sure you always get a tasty treat because this is where a tasty treat, French style, comes from. I bought a croissant. It's a very good looking croissant and I'm sure it will taste good. But the real reason I bought the croissant is because my grandmother had a fascination with them. Every time my grandmother, Grandma Beads, nicknamed Beads because she wore beads, 
And as children, we were fascinated by them. We'd play with them as they dangled around her neck. Every time she got the opportunity, she would order a croissant. But she couldn't, pr but she couldn't pronounce the name properly. I guess it runs in the family. She struggled with it, calling a croissant or croissant or croissant. She didn't even mispronounce it the same way. My cousin Tracy tried to coach her, but to no avail. It still came out croissant. I don't know why she had so much trouble trying to pronounce the word croissant, but she did. She came from a upstate, small town in upstate Minnesota, and had never seen a croissant until later in her life. Either way, my cousin Tracy and I thought it was kind of cute the way she would call it a croissant. You know, it's a good memory. See, it is a good pastry, very flaky, which is the hallmark of a good croissant. So, buying a croissant was a two-four. I got a good pastry and a chance to remember my grandma beads and her love of croissants. Thank you kindly.